hey good morning very warm welcome everyone i welcome you all to the bengaluru edition of this webinar on the topic business of reality in digital world perspective and the road ahead today morning when i opened my linkedin feed very interesting product video was out there for me which says digital spoon gone are the days when someone says namak ya salt thoda dalo right so the spoon measures exact quantity right there on the spoon and that is where we all are leading isn't it so the digitization has entered our kitchen and cooking kind of things now so on that note i would like to welcome the host and the moderator for this seminar mr samir arora he is secretary and national association of realtors india president president of confederation of real estate associates india ceo and founder at huts global bangalore he is veteran with three decades of industry experience a learner speaker mentor coach and a trainer by choice a traveler a humorist by hobby and a serial entrepreneur by experience mr arora has carved a niche for himself in the real estate industry his company huts global is a multiple award winning real estate advisory and marketing company based out of bangalore india and has been awarded as the top associates of top developers like mantri purwankara a brigade and prestige amongst the others international marketing has been his forte and traveling to 60 plus countries around the world has been his learning ground asset real estate is his passion and he conducts sessions and road shows in usa every year on wealth creation via real estate as an asset class humor for him is the essence of life both in business and personal life and he continues to anchor many formal and fun events a legacy he built on stage with awards in schools and college he has also earned many accolades in archery a multifaceted man mr samir arora hails from a proud family of indian army and owes his discipline adventure and never say die spirit and ethics to his origins and upbringing today renowned for his special contribution to wealth creation and real estate investment in india mr samir arora has his own way of creating an environment full of professionalism with a necessary touch of fun he is followed by many on the social media where he pens in under the brand name the lai lama he only advise to all his to learn continuously and acquire skill sets as success he believes will then follow you on its own mr samir arora believes in the magic of dreams thank you mr samir arora and i welcome you on the dais over to you sir thank you so much tushar thank you so much for the lovely introduction uh, of course i was feeling very nervous to come in between all of these uh, stalwarts of the real estate industry as i might call them uh, and uh, thankfully to that introduction i feel a little more confident now so let me start uh, first of all thank you to kage for having invited us uh, to to do this webinar which is of extremely uh extreme great importance to probably all the audience because i will start by saying if you see the last three and a half months the most common statement used is stay home stay safe and we add up stay in touch digital so the importance of the word home or real estate and the digital touch is not lost upon anyone and i think that's what we are going to talk about today the the digital space especially in correlation to the real estate world you know they say change is good and healthy uh, it's it's like the way an operating system needs an update similarly the world changes accept it embrace it that this is ground zero and that is how we can grow stronger they again say change is constant actually the other day i and my wife went to see our doctor i wasn't feeling well and after examining me the doc said told my wife that your husband needs a lot of rest and peace 
and here are the sleeping pills. So my wife asked the doctor, when do I give the sleeping pills to him? And the doctor replied, he needs rest and peace. The sleeping pills are for you. And that's how, you know, we, we, we sort of uh, change in and bring in, bring in the change that is required. So in the wake of COVID-19, the pandemic that has captivated us inside our homes started a home, work from home culture. A lot of us will see this as a crisis. But today we look at this pandemic as an opportunity to bring complete digitization into an everlasting industry, actually an industry that's the only one that's called real, the real estate industry. So we start our webinar, the business of reality in digital world, world and perspectives and road ahead. But before I do that, let me just briefly mention the name of the panelists and I'll do a detailed introduction as I ask each one of them a question. Uh, you see on our screens, uh, Mr. Srinivasan Subramaniam, Mr. John Korovilla, Mr. Karan Bindal, and Mr. Kishore Jain. And each one of them is an accomplished uh, person in their field of industry and life. And I'm sure it would be wonderful to hear each of them. But even before that, let's talk Kage Real Talks, a community of realtors and real estate enthusiasts who believe in sharing knowledge, discussing problems, understanding trends, enabling learning, unlearning the obsolete, leveraging technology, and creating a network of empowered reality business leaders and equally equipped stakeholders. Today we have with us this amazing panel and uh, to break down this uncertainty that lies ahead of us and give a gist of how the real estate industry would be post pandemic. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our first panelist, Mr. Srinivasan Subramanian. Popularly known as Srini in personal and professional circles, both in India and in the Middle East, Mr. Srinivasan strongly believes that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I perfectly agree with you, Srini, sir. I've been trying that with my wife for 30 years and that's why I'm called insane, you know, so <laughs> just kidding. But Mr. <laughs> Srinivasan is the CEO of SNN Builders Private Limited Bangalore, where he is currently helming all operational affairs of the organization. Having an experience of over 25 years in advertising, communications, and marketing, Mr. Srini has worked at SNN since 2009 and set path breaking trends in the marketing and communication of real estate development companies in Bangalore and has played a crucial role in ensuring that SNN proudly stands amongst the top 10 real estate developers and be recognized as the fastest growing real estate company. Best path breaking CEO award for five consecutive years from 2015 to 2019. Wow, Shanisa. And the Indian of the year in 2017 by Brands Academy are few of the feathers, many feathers in Mr. Shanivasan's cap. Real estate is not the only gameplay he excels in. He excels at playing cricket and badminton with eminent names like Ravi Shastri, Imran Khan, Prakash Padukone, Syed Modi, and all of this makes Mr. Srini a unique personality in the real estate industry. So welcome, Mr. Srinivasan. Thank you Thank for you. joining us today. You know, uh, Srini sir, my wife wanted to understand economy from me and in my layman language, I explained to her <laughs> that my hair has been undergoing a recession. <laughs> my stomach has been undergoing a inflation. And with COVID-19 and lockdowns, my business has been going in a recession. So jokes apart, you, you understand economy way far better. And we've been under complete lockdown since past three months. All include real estate are down. Fortunately, we opened up a bit in Bangalore, but many other cities and states are down. So there is a sense of insecurity probably amongst the entire world. How do you see the business and economy in the next six months to one year? Can homes be sold as commodities online? Mr. Srinivasan. 
good morning first of all to everyone uh, very elite panel i know john very well i know samir very well pleasure meeting you kishore sir and uh, karan as well and hope that whatever we are going to share with the people uh, will throw a lot of light as far as uh, future of uh, real estate is concerned uh, just to recap i know that all of you know about it that last few years have been very challenging as far as real estate is concerned we have been struggling since uh, 2016 uh, first demolition then demon then rera then gst then now the uninvited guest uh, covid 19 but i am sure that uh, every situation we always expect the government to bail us out uh, which is yes we need support but uh, we can't really you know bank on that and then stop doing what we are best in doing so lockdown has taught everyone home is definitely uh, in their to do list and uh, people prefer more space now basically because an extra 10 by 10 or 10 by 12 room is always more than welcome as people have experienced this lockdown i i'm not saying because of lockdown generally people prefer now larger homes and bangalore being a real estate industry which is kind of a gettable price bracket i think people still prefer to by larger homes and then you know and so i feel that uh, next 6 to 8 months uh, upgradation in their lifestyle could be the only one thing which is the 1 bhk guys will look for a 2 bhk 2 to 3 3 to 4 so everybody wants to move in in a larger homes with more amenities so that any situation they don't uh, feel that the things which they require on a daily life is absent for them Uh, for sure prices will not go down because uh, that i want to strongly state that uh, prices will never go down in bangalore because there is certain expenditure uh, which are fixed as far as real estate is concerned and uh, bangalore as i said is one of the market which has got even at about say 5000 rupees you can still get a very good property well within the city limits itself so prices will not go down on the contrary we have if you go to see snn uh, we always set the path as uh, samir said uh, we have increased the price in two of our projects clemont and uh, grandior and still we are receiving uh, yesterday after increasing the price we got a booking as well so people will definitely uh, go in for more uh, completed projects uh, uh, the ready to move in will definitely take over as far as uh, next 6 months people want to move and the construction will go go through a little bit of a, a, a tough time but it will definitely pick up and people will definitely go for under construction as well uh, sales will definitely sold, slowed down for the past almost 3 months and that sluggish kind of a thing will continue for the next at least 6 months and uh, as i said ready to move in inventory will get sold out uh, could give a good opportunity for people to buy homes now and uh, as far as the 2020 is concerned i think the first 6 months uh, was looking okay at least not the first 6 months at least the first 3 months were looking really good but next 9 months could be a very challenging one and into early 2021 also we will have little bit of issues as far as real estate is concerned uh, as for the new norms and the new media approach could be digital digital and more digital this is what i feel other media vehicles will support digital earlier it used to be print first radio then outdoor then digital now it's going to be reverse all the way anyway outdoor is not an opportunity which is available for people so uh, digital will take over even i can give you an example uh, during the lockdown in the place where i am staying they were not allowing newspapers for almost two months two to three months when uh, they resumed it i i don't have the real inclination to go through the newspaper anymore basically because this is going to be a trend setter digital is going to take over everything in terms of whatever we do yes there is a little bit of a, uh, the final element of people really want to have a look and feel of the uh, house they are going home they are going to buy so there will be site visits but majority of it will be done in digital so uh, pre sales post sales and hand over and people moving in everything could be digitally done vr will become you no know, virtual reality will become the ne next new norm so i have a feeling it's all good about whatever we are doing see even if you see now i meet the channel partners more more on zoom meeting than i used to meet them personally so this gives a chance say for example 
uh, head of uh, some of the institutions like Samir, I can definitely tell him, Samir, why don't you come on Zoom? I want to discuss with you something regarding uh, a, a plan which we have for channel partners. So it will be easy for the home, the, the company owners, the CEOs and the directors to meet the channel partners, meet customers. We met a group of customers and then we closed it. And you know, then they went to the site just to cut the check and give it to us. But post sales, it has to plan it out in such a way because uh, the payment gateways and other things are still not 100% uh, foolproof as far as India is concerned. But I am sure that most of it, like people like Salesforce can play a role in all these things and then they can come into play as far as these things are concerned. Finally, I feel that to conclude that next uh, six months are going to be a little bit of a struggle. So you strive the next six months and then thrive is definitely on for all of us. Thank you. Over to you, Samir. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. That was absolutely uh, crisp and enlightening. As always, Mr. Shrini, thank you so much. We'll come thank back you, to you with more questions in the panel Please. and the audience. This was fantastic. Now, uh, I will move on to our next panelist, So, which is a very reputed personality, Mr. Kishore Jain. Welcome, Mr. Kishore Jain. Mr. Kishore Jain is the president of Kredai Bengaluru chapter for 2019-21. Kredai, which is the Confederation of Real Estate Developers Association of India, an apex body of all registered real estate builders and developers of the country. That's quite a prestigious position. And we all know Mr. Kishore. So having a business expertise of over 25 years in the field of real estate and construction, he has been instrumental in sculpturing some of the finest landmarks elevations in the skyline of Bangalore. Mr. Kishore has served as chief secretary and since then has been in the prestigious board of directors in Jain International Trade Organization, JITO, which is a worldwide body of Jain businessmen, industrialists, knowledge workers, and professionals in various fields reflecting their glory of ethical business. His penchant to serve the society in different dimensions has led him to become the trustee in one of the well-known hospitals, Shri Bhagwan Mahavir Jain Hospitals and an educational institute, Adarsh College. Wow. Kishore sir, men marry women with the hope that they will never change. Women marry men with the hope that they will change. And they are both disappointed. Forget women. Even Alexa is giving back to me these days. You know, yesterday I said, hey Alexa, and Alexa told me, shut up, listen to Prime Minister Modi ji, and become Atmanirbhar. <laughs> As they say, to err is human, but to forgive is neither the government nor the company's policy, it seems. Because we are going to talk to you about policy. Mr. Kishore, amongst these ever-changing times, a lot of new policies are being made and some old ones are being modified. What do you think are the existing government policies for the real estate industry and especially are they digitally wise? Mr. Kishore Jain. Sir. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Samir, for those nice words and the humor to make the whole uh, environment lighter. <laughs> Although everybody is nervous with these allied panelists and uh, understanding of the real estate market. One of the important stakeholders of real estate is the government agencies. In fact, uh, on an average uh, nationally, real estate approval will take anywhere between 8 to 24 months. Uh, there's multiple approval agencies, uh, so many NOCs we need to receive, uh, and most of them will not be in tandem. One department will say something different, and if you wanted to implement, uh, the other department or other uh, agencies will not allow us to do so. And uh, government is also continuously upgrading and changing themselves. Uh, and particular Bangalore City, which is known as the IT capital of the country, 
or maybe for the East also, I would say. Uh, I think the beginning of 21st century, one of the breakthrough of Karnataka government was uh, to start with a Bhumi software. Bhumi software is basically the land record, online re land record management. What does it mean? So this software says very clearly, uh, who is the owner of that land? What is those, if it is agricultural land, uh, what is those uh, RTCs, uh, which give the right to what kind of crop was developed, who was the owner, who was doing harvesting, how was the revenue map, and uh, several other things related to the revenue matter. So Bumi was the first in the country which has done a breakthrough and digitizing all the land record, and it was done in a very successful manner. And the journey started from there, and somehow for almost a decade, nothing moved. And uh, post Modi government, which took charge in the year 2014, uh, one of the top priority for the government was to improve the World Bank ranking in terms of ease of doing business. In 2014, uh, India was at the ease of doing business ranking was around 135 among the 190 countries. And recently, last counted, it has come down to 63. So what made these changes and how the real estate, because one of the Different parameters were there to check on the ease of doing business. Among the seven parameters, one of the important parameters to determine ease of doing business was the construction permit. So because of the government will develop on the ease of doing business ranking, uh, construction permit, then government started looking at very, very seriously. And particularly in the Karnataka and in Bangalore, I think 2015, the BBMPA started with the online approval system. So one of the important criticality for any project is the plan approval from the BBMP, the local planning authority, which gives the building licenses. And they have developed a software and through which uh, we can uh, load our AutoCAD drawing uh, and software on its automatic can take care of things. Uh, and the whole objective was uh, to see that uh, approval system will be transparent and it will be in a time-bounded manner. But that was the intent, huh? but the reality was something different. Uh, as the software was having a starting teething trouble and uh, there was a human intervention across uh, and they started with a hybrid model and that hybrid model has really made our life miserable rather than easing uh, it has become more complicated. It used to take more time. And uh, software was very, very sensitive to some of the finer aspect of the building plan. So every time it was more like a uh, snake and ladder game. Somewhere you start moving with the software, which will take seven days or so continuously for it to check, auto check. And somewhere something goes wrong, uh, then you are back to the square one. It was more become a snake and ladder. And now I'm happy to announce uh, he, with our consistent effort from Kadai our, as a stakeholder in one of the important stakeholders and continuous feedback mechanism and government willingness to improvise on that. Uh, as on 1st July, just three days before, uh, the BBMP has launched uh, a online uh, land building, plot development, all those things uh, with a common application form. It means uh, Along with the BBMP approval, you can have uh, application forms concurrently. It can be submitted to the various department. It can be internal department as well as the external department. Internal department means the revenue side, the legality of the particular land parcel. External can be KSPCB. It can be Airport Authority of India. It goes to environmental uh, uh, approval also. BESCOM, the utility service provider like BESCOM, BWSSB, and so on. This has been recently on 1st July, this has been uh, implemented. This is called online building plan system. And uh, we hope and this is reasonably confident. Uh, this is going to be a game changer in terms of approval for the buildings, uh, for all the projects. And uh, the time which they have stipulated 
is around only 18 days. The flat 18 days, uh, provided some estrich conditions are there, you'll be able to get this. This is what I am talking about: the building plan approval and what I could see in the future. But along with that, uh, Karnataka government uh, has done some of the remarkable job. Uh, like again, with the association of Kradai, I think two years before, uh, we were able to get that one of the cumbersome NOC process that was called fire NOC. And that is the most critical uh, no objection certificate we require for any building to function. And earlier it's to take six to eight months also for the fire approval to get. I think with the, this is the Agni software, and this software was in fact purchased by Kradai and got implemented by fire department. Uh, in terms of uh, NOCs, and second most important thing uh, recently, which the stamp and registration department has started. Huh? Uh, this is called the PRD scheme, like the pre-registration of data entry. So whenever you have to go for a registration, so it will have three parts. One is the data entry, second is the document to be verified, and third is the Uh, face ID and the biometric uh, thumb impression. So two part like uh, document entry and document verification can be done online that sitting at your home. And Kreda is working very closely. In fact, as of yesterday evening, uh, we were with uh, IGR, uh, where the agreement to sale of any of the project uh, can be started at uh, can be done at developer's office. So customer doesn't have to visit to those sub register office. You can come to a developer office at a prescribed appointed time, and prior to that, the department would have that document entry would have been there in their server, and document verification would have been there, and of course there would have been online payment also. This will save a lot of time, and probably the kind of rush which you see in the sub register office uh, that also will be reduced. And while we were talking already, uh, government uh, maybe COVID or non COVID. Uh, Uh, the stamp and registration department has made it as a mandatory. If at all you want any kind of CC or EC, that is encumbrance certificate or so, you have to do 100% online. You don't have to visit the register office. So that way, government is ensuring the footfalls are less, and online will be able to track it. And uh, there will be a stipulation of time and uh, completely transparent and convenient to the end users. And following on the same, there are various departments like Bescom has also started online approval system, and uh, everything I would say Karnataka is also becoming IT savvy, and they are working towards it. And majority of the things has been happened, and still little uh, there is a scope for improvement, but much has been done in Karnataka. So I would give good marks to the government huh, for becoming making things digitized and. Uh, Rather than ease of doing business, sir, it has become ease of living business. So we have that ease of living for me. Yeah. Over to you, Samir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, uh, Kishore, sir. I think this is one part of uh, the the industry uh, which which can only be highlighted by somebody uh, who's. As enlightened as Mr. Kishore and heading Kredai, and I think these are such wonderful initiatives from our government, and uh, I'm sure it will help us in times to come. So thank you for enlightening us on that, sir. Uh, let me move on to our third panelist for the day, Mr. Karan Bindal. Karan Bindal is a builder, industrialist, founder of investment funds in startups and entrepreneurship. and is also involved with social impact investment karan is an advisor and a stakeholder in many business ventures through his venture fundings like the token the henindia.com the brownleaf ventures have accelerator and are some of these and brand people that recognize him through this in the real estate domain He is a partner of Sarita Developers, a renowned builder in East Bangalore, 
with the reputation of being most quality conscious with time adherence and value oriented companies karan runs an investment fund in real estate too where they invest in other mid sized developers they are also investors in some real estate startups karan has been a important and an integral part of prominent real estate lobbies such as bradai nadeco etc with an expertise in corporate communication loyalty management pr and events working with eminent clients like toyota group times group samsung channel tv channel b ten sports karan is a philanthropist by passion and a serial entrepreneur with a strong vision to transform 1500 entrepreneurs and make them successful to have a lasting impact on the society wow that's a that's that's a lot of things karan and i have the privilege and honor of uh, knowing karan as a friend too so karan my wife leads a very happy life and i think the reason for that is uh, my my guess is the reason for that is she does not have a wife so she can continue to have a happy life you know she asked me the other day if i look fat after this covid 19 lockdown and she was growing a complex she said please give me a compliment and i told her you have a perfect eyesight and the fight started <laughs> why am i saying this karan they say the best place to hide a dead body is on the page 2 of google search results so mr bindal as we heard about the nature of the industry in the next 6 months to 1 year from mr shrinivasan and the policy improvements from from uh, issue dr kishore what do you think is the market trends forecast and how do we get ready to take on the future of reality will digital route be the reality industry's new mantra for success karan mendel please uh, thank you samir first of all uh, i had a wonderful learning from shrinivas sir and kishore sir and all, as always samir it's a good humor to start off with you so you have taken the opportunity to crack jokes on why and you understand that i'm running a women accelerator fund in the company so over back to you i asked samir a couple of days back boss why are you working back in office he says guys i joined bjp and i said what is it he said i want to avoid bartan jhadu pocha at home and therefore i using <laughs> webinars so the first rule uh, since we are meeting online unlike most of the people used to meet in conferences it says very well that we are moving towards a digital world the very fact that kishore sir said about the various policies and thanks to the predecessors in the industry they are setting up some benchmarks so once we look at real estate the real estate has what stakeholders it has stakeholders as land owners government builders like us realtors like you and startups and initial fundings like john and other people and of course the customers the vendors and everybody but today when i present myself i'll try to give you different perspectives that how each sector is getting affected by digitalization and how it's going to impact industry not 6 months to 1 year but essentially in next mid term to 5 years and next 10 years also and uh, i come from cat b and cat c developers and i can clearly see the after effects of how the bigger developers market share has been going and how the most of the cat b cat c developers are evading of the industry it is not necessary because of sales parameters but it is essentially because they are not able to cope up with the digitalization digitalization of land records what sir told digitalization of policies digitalization of rera there right self i speak in so many conferences and i said it's a project management tool for you to understand that how your own project is getting evaluated rather than looking at as a policy and if you're not able to cope up with the policies and structures down the line people who don't adopt better get exits out of the industry itself so with this note uh, i'll start off with things uh, two things this is zoru ka bhai ek taraf sari khuda ek taraf and i said two days back my brother in law wedding was there in ludhiana i was the marriage maker i did not went and i we blessed him on online a clear landmark of digitalization hmm? and sir, uh, can i have the screen sharing option please because i am not so good as kishore sir and shrinivas sir in remembering notes so i'll present that on the cheat code okay uh am is my slide uh, visible samir super 
so this is all about today what i'm going to present the very fact we are entering up with china into trade war and the government saying please ban these apps it's a very very clear indication that the world is falling flat there is no seamless boundaries across the globe and the digitalization of every sector will kill every sector the undercurrents are already there people who are not accepting will have to adopt fast and if they don't adopt again i repeat they better move out and it is nothing to do with real estate real estate is contributing as per the government stats by 25 13.5% gdp of the country and 30% of the india is developed and dependent on real estate if all the sectors are government is fighting on the bans of applications imagine what after face you are talking i would like to showcase some stats to you and if users want i can share the slide later to you now this tells up the growth of digitalization in india what each uh, i think all of i i am youngster i started my career in 95 and many of you must have already been 10 years established in the industry we were in the era of faxes pagers and then came the internet penetration in the india and by 2002 the number of users in the websites and look at today the number of websites available 17 crores roughly the number of sms if you remember 2000 2005 one of the easiest way to digitalization people used to say i'm sending bulk email or they will say i'm sending bulk smss and today if you look at email and sms has become an obsolete tool of marketing real estate itself but still the overall industry says 3.4 347 billion smss are being sent and this is not real estate this is the total industry size i'm sharing only the top cad a and cad b builders across the country whether in commercial real estate residential other products they have been adopting to crm and saps or any such tools of project management just about petty 10000 people of their total industry which claims to have more than 7 to 10000 builders in both organized sector and another 15000 people in unorganized sectors and real estate agents forget about the era registered users and real estate agents india has roughly 3 to 5 lakh real estate agents independently working so this tells us why the success story is moving in a different direction and post 2015 if you look at it the trend has been moving towards online drastically in the real estate sales while in 2015 only 10% people were using online as a first media and since we most of us come from bangalore it looks many of them are online but look at cases like delhi up punjab with the intense penetration and the knowledge is still moving slightly upwards but still as on today 75% people go online to check at least what is the property online again and again i'm trying to reinforce the facts digitalization is penetrating fast now this is a very interesting facts i uh, figured out from various sources all i'm trying to portray for this is if you look at the stats 25% of the total marketing budget in the real estate is being spent on digitalization and i'm not talking electronic media electronic media is already obsolete 42% of the buyers use internet as a first search and finally if you look at stats 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 it tells 300% growth of the people using an internet as a case study has been going year on year basis now just for the uh, understanding of many people who may not be directly in the real estate or who might be exploring real estate i'm just trying to say the top 5 or 10 lines what are the different products available in real estates and many of the time when we look at commercial residential we forget about public private partnerships models and the new age adoptions we have heard success stories of zolos we have success story nestaways co-livings in the next slide i'll share you how different technologies are changing the face of real estate and don't forget rights reit it is going to change the way the real estate is being done in next 5 years and we are going to see lots and lots of crashes please focus on reit in the next 5 years now this is a favorite subject of john i am sure and he will give much much more deeper insights but uh, i just try to give you a very top level view of how different technologies are changing in fact real estate when we think of technologies in real estate is very different but when we look at larger world it's totally different now look at flipkart it has killed a real retail but has increased substantially the warehouse markets in the industry swiggy it has killed dining in retail 
but has created hubs and spokes model across the country where the back end offices are doing phenomenal well look at make my trip for example i was on a consulting board of make my trip in way back to one one and it was about to shut down it got luckily funding and i know how 10 years they work together but today what has happened it has merged totally drastically shift the office space of operators and increase the hotels and restaurants now this is a very interesting case which i wanted to point out of ola many of us think ola is affecting only car businesses yes it's a shared travel but it has drastically reduced the demand of retail car showrooms the car companies are not getting affected but the number of because one transaction of corporate of ola imagine the dealers losing the businesses out of it and if you think back home after this presentation how each technology is changing the prima facie of the way we have to do real estate business now i'll talk more specific in some of the top initiatives in real estate startups and initiatives which are very different from conventional building as a builder what i do or mr shinivas what he does or kishore sir what he does now look at a models of nestor waste co livings i think uh, today many of the top builders in bangalore especially divya shree is entering this foray shiram is already entered this foray and many such builders to sell their real estate as a very very different product which it was doing and nestor way mind you it's a technology product of course back end is a physical property so the idea is physical property is getting merged with digital marketing with digital platforms same way if you look at it why many builders have moved to selling their property to portals like 99 acres magic bricks or all the top 10 portals of the country look at a classic example of urban club what it has affected it has got 19.7 million users but what it has affected for you in a real estate the way you think in real estate and next time i'm going to talk about as a builders what we do to adopt this change a good classic example is my gate i remember abhishek met me about the founder about 4 years back and he said karan the kind of funding which i'll get for next 5 years from matrix and other ventures i am going to change everything what you can imagine in the last mile management and the way you do real estate down the line and this is becoming a hardcore growth today some of the good interesting innovation so samir the topic was digitalization and i moved away slightly from only sales to give a top level view of digitalization affecting the industry itself my last two slide will be about sales now samir sir told about bhumi land surveys oh sorry uh, and other stories i have known plenty of technologies which will change the way the land surveys are done through land mapping drones land mapping technologies results coming out of it automated car parkings the malls are way going to change the you are no more going to book for, go to the mall and say i want a parking you are going to get the parking setting at home in 10 minutes gps for road i work on certain projects especially one in very famous called pothole raja in bangalore where i can tell you sitting in bangalore each and every pothole and the government says boss don't tell the records to the public the reason if it known to the public uh, the beauty of the government we all know how to make and you know, transfer the money to the records and of course internet of things right now from the way the doors are done water meter sensors door appliances and all that in essence all i'm trying to say digitalization is changing you right from your productions of a real estate right from operations of a real estate right from sales of real estate and every day now this is the last thing which i want to cover typically if you look at 5 years back uh aso cham today in 2019 declared 2500 crore roughly is the budget spent on real estate marketing as in sales purely from a residential builder if you look at it 5 years back and i think shini sir and kishore sir can probably put more highlight on to it but the way we used to sell real estate has totally changed and therefore many people are not even surviving talking about my company itself till 2017 we never had a website we used to sell through channel partners or through brochures or through just walk-ins but we could feel the pain uh, i am a part of two lobbies of bangalore and i used to highlight builders friends who you, whom of you will not adopt by 2022 pack your bags one second please so if you look at today the budget every year is moving towards online the 32% budget which is now digitalization budget 
was about 15% some two years back. And imagine this budget is going to change, 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 change. Lastly, the most important thing, what are the various tools we are using right now in selling real estate? People create micro websites, about 3.7 crore web micro websites are there. Number of portal ads, now we started making walkthroughs. Projects, now the latest thing, virtual tools. Artificial intelligence based chat boxes, digital cards and social media campaigns. Only 97 lakhs companies are still using that. So the point I am trying to showcase, understand and start adopting. That's part one. Part two, going back in next one year, only three thumb rules will survive. Companies who are frugal, who are sensible will survive. Companies who have high immunity, it's not about the owner's immunity. The biggest can crash, the mightiest can crash and the smallest can crash. It's the companies who are not over leveraged will survive. And the last but not the least companies who are growth mindset focused. In this era, if the sales has probably slowed down, as Chini had said, demand for high sales, finished inventories will grow up. But the question I am seeing, GST increased my sales turnover. Vera increased my sales. And even this period is increasing my sales as a developer. Why? The single answer, do people trust you and value you? Are you a brand who can, they can play around with? And digitalization will play a heavy, heavy role in creating that brand association with your markets. Thank you. Over to you, Samir. Karan, sir. Wow. And this one comes from the heart. I think uh, a fabulous presentation. Uh, great statistics compilation. And sometimes we can know people for a long while and yet not know them. So I'm, I'm happy to see a different facet of you. Absolutely fantastic. Lovely presentation. Thank you, Karan Bhai. So Thank let you, me move on to our fourth panelist of the day. Uh, somebody that I always wanted to meet for multiple reasons, but haven't. Uh, so I'm happy to see Mr. Prashant Prakash here. Mr. Prashant is a co-founder of Erasmic, one of India's first early stage funds. And he founded two more enterprises in the internet and multimedia publishing domains. He's the, also the co-founder of the famous Excel Partners India since 2008. Mr. Prashant has his finger on the pulse of the Indian technology scenario. His primary focus is on consumer internet services, online marketplaces with SAAS. With his keen ability to spot emerging opportunities, he has invested in Indian technology startups like Agrostar, Bluestone, My Show, Clevertap, Fab Hotels, Housing, Rento Mojo, T Box, Quicksilver, Gift Big, and many more, where Prashant serves as a board member. Excel has also invested in category defining companies like Flipkart, Ola, Swiggy, Cult, and Blackbuck. Wow. Prashant is also the chairman of uh, Shikshana Foundation, which was started in 2002 with a vision to ensure quality education for every child studying in the government public education system. Under his leadership over the last 10 years, Dikshana has expanded to 40,000 plus government schools, reaching out to millions of children. He is also the chairperson on the United Way of Bangalore, a unique social organization, which brings together all the relevant stakeholders such as corporates, government bodies, and community members to address any environmental challenges faced by the community. Prashant earned an MS in computer science from the University of Delaware and holds a bachelor's degree in computer science from the BIT uh, Bangalore Institute of Technology. Prashant is a native of Bangalore. Mr. Prashant Prakash, as we heard some excellent insights from Mr. Srinivasan, Mr. Jain, and now Karan Bindal, on how digitization will be extensively used in all business processes, it is still a fact that digital literacy is almost non-existent amongst a vast majority of the rural Indian population. Before I go on to <coughs> the question, I'll add a little 
uh, humor in here. You know, I and my wife, we were very happily married 30 years now. And marriage, like real estate, I believe, is a lot of work. We have to work on it consistently, whether it's real estate or digitization, for it to be successful. So even after 30 years, trust me, my wife and I go out for a candlelit dinner and dance twice a week. That's obviously pre-COVID. Uh, we, we do that without fail and keep working on it. The only thing is, she goes on Tuesdays and I go on Fridays and we keep it alive. So digital literacy, I believe, is the ability to use technology to navigate, evaluate, and create worthwhile information. In fact, I believe, watching all of you techies and investors, that I made the biggest mistake of my life by scoring A plus in my engineering, while all the successful tech gurus today are the ones who did C plus uh, plus or the Java zero, basically. So marketing is no longer about the stuff that you make, but the story you tell, and engagement is the key. So you tell us, Mr. Prashant, how do we define digital literacy with respect to the real estate industry? Can a massive proportion of digital illiterate India, illiterate India, cope up with the demands of the change in the markets? Mr. Prashant Prakash, thank you. Yeah. So can I uh, have somebody put up the presentation, please? Thank you. Thank you for the kind introduction. And it's a pleasure to be here. It's my pleasure. And, uh, you know, uh, Excel has uh, been an early investor in real estate. Uh, so we were investors in Prop Tiger and then later uh, became investors in housing. Uh, we have an investment in Stanza Living and, uh, um, you know, um, some of the other uh, companies that were spoken about like Urban Clap and so on. So I think there has been a really, a, uh, is, is the presentation, uh, somebody putting up the presentation? I had shared it with the uh, team Kage, can we have uh, Mr. Prakash's presentation put up on the slide? Uh, I would suggest you talk ahead, sir, till. Uh, okay, let, let, let me continue. Uh, yeah, okay, that's, yeah. I think it's okay. there. Yeah, that's okay. there. Thank you. So, uh, can we move to the next slide, please? So, I think a lot about uh, this uh, has already been spoken. So, just to set the context, while digital literacy is important and I think it has a role to play and uh, but a lot of real estate uh, behaviors are really going to yield fruit like you saw in the previous presentation uh, in the urban areas. Uh, it, I don't I, I think while there's a lot of rural uh, India that we need to worry about but I think it's the rapid urbanization uh, that's happening that uh, you know is going to um, you know be a big positive for real estate. And the good news is whether it is a banned Chinese app like TikTok or a new uh, Indian app like Mitro or Chingari, rural India is very, very quickly adopting digital technologies and tools. So we have a company called AgroStar, which is a farmer app. So today farmers, the uh, next generation of farmers, the son of a farmer, for example, if he needs to understand why his crop has a pest attack, why his crop has a disease. He's not going to wait for the field officer for a whole week to come and inspect his crop and then see what to do. Uh, his first thing would be to join a community of farmers online or use a AI based uh, detection uh, tool, which will uh, uh, tell him what exactly is the problem and what is the uh, crop protection he needs to be doing. So the good news is literacy is uh, happening, uh, if not directly for real estate, there is a lot of literacy happening because of other uh, tools that are being adopted. And, uh, you know, uh, people in rural India sometimes uh, have a lot of free time, right? So uh, if, if you ask me why tools like TikTok uh, are so popular in India, I think uh, in urban India, a lot of folks like your drivers and my drivers have a lot of free time to kill. And there's a lot of other uh, uh, folks in, uh, in other parts of the rural economy that have a lot of time. But hopefully, uh, they also are doing productive uh, things in their life. And uh, once they 
move to either a tier three town or a tier two town and they decide to buy real estate or decide to transact, they already are familiar with uh, what, um, uh, what, what's the power of online and what can you do online. The uh, interesting thing that we have, uh, and I th which have spoken about, I will not repeat that, but I think uh, very soon, 100% of all real estate buying is going to be post uh, some form of research online. So it's, uh, so pretty much if you uh, are not in, uh, if you don't have a web presence and if you're not in the, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the best of, uh, 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 capabilities as an organization to provide a digital presence, you're just not going to have uh, less sales, you're going to have no sales. Right? Next slide. Please. So I think uh, the urbanization uh, trend is one we said, you know, uh, where, where there's a lot of people who are getting digitally literate uh, who are moving to urban areas and will tomorrow be willing to or uh, will be capable of transacting online. But I think the other big accelerator has been COVID. So if you take a platform, uh, uh, e-commerce, typical e-commerce platform like one of our companies, Flipkart or Mintra or any of these, uh, it took almost a decade for the penetration to go from, uh, you know, from zero to uh, whatever 1.8 or 1 or, or, or uh, 2 to 3 percent but just in three to four months penetration has moved all the way from three percent to now close to five percent and uh, if you look at how long COVID is going to be with us it's not going to be three months six months but at least a year uh, you can look at you know us catching up with the best of the western penetration uh, which is around eight to ten percent of all e-commerce will be online the other big trend is uh, use of digital payments. I think that uh, has been a significant uh, uh, you know, post-COVID phenomena. Nobody wants to transact. Uh, just give me one minute, please. Just give me one minute. Just give me one minute. Sir, I'll call you back, sir. I'm in a seminar. <clears throat> huh? So, uh, I'm sorry. So, so the increasing uh, uh, move to a cashless economy, I think, is going to be the biggest comfort that you know people are were started with very very small transactions early on, but I think uh, you know as in as people get more and more comfortable with larger and larger transactions, so people would initially uh, buy ticket, uh, be comfortable with ticket sizes of less than thousand. Then they got comfortable with uh, buying white goods online. They got comfortable with uh, uh, 50 to uh, uh, 60, 70,000 rupees. Then, peop then people are now uh, very comfortable with buying jewelry up to a lakh online. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, it's not, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and a couple of our com companies are starting to see purchases. Uh, next slide, please. I'll talk specifically about. Uh, one company, Home Lane. Uh, so Home Lane is a high ticket purchase, right? So you're talking about at least uh, uh, a minimum uh, a kitchen plus your wardrobes is a minimum of about five to 10 lakh rupees. So we, we could never imagine somebody making this purchase without any physical visit to a showroom or to what we call as a, a demo center or at least one physical meeting. In just the last two to three months, they have now closed close to, I think when we saw this, it was about, when I, I think, uh, uh, but as of today, close to 500 new homes have uh, bought uh, five to 10 lakhs worth of uh, home uh, interior furnishings without a single visit, uh, physically looking at something. The reason they were able to do that is because of the tools they had built pre-COVID. So a lot of companies will benefit who from the from the technology and the tools they had built pre-COVID 
Of course, there'll be companies now that will be forced to build new technologies, but I think they will be trumped by companies that already had the vision maybe two years ago to not depend on just physical retail, but assume that the world is going to be omni-channel and that you, you, you need actually a blended pre physical and uh, uh, digital presence. And today, uh, the physical presence has become moot. It is discretionary. It's the online presence that makes a difference. So these companies are able to double down on their investments in these digital tools, which allowed you to transact remotely uh, without any interaction. Now, coming back to digital literacy and connecting to digital literacy, a person who had not seen or interacted with a video platform like YouTube, a person who had not seen or interacted closely or engaged with a, 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 a tool like Facebook would not be comfortable in even having a video interaction on spacecraft. So, so I think some of these early uh, tools, com uh, which are community tools, which are tools which probably uh, don't have any commerce intent in them, but more help people uh, uh, just be in touch with friends or uh, just, uh, you know, um, uh, help uh, build, uh, you know, relationships with people. I think those, uh, the use of those tools are, are what are helping uh, people get comfortable and be more literate. So it's, it's it's not only it's not only literacy, uh, it's not only digital literacy, but it is commerce literacy, and uh, it's important that people get comfort with small baby steps. You start with ordering on Swiggy uh, and Urban Clap, and then you move to slightly bigger transactions, and then hopefully, uh, you know, you buy a whole home online, which is happening with. Uh, uh, and I think housing has been one of the leaders in this space, where again they have closed. Uh, close to about 100 plus transactions in the last three months with people not visiting uh, anybody physically. Uh, next slide, please. So I think, uh, you know, just talking about some new emerging trends, I, I, I'm, I think there was a lot that was spoken about, uh, you know, just some of the uh, tools that have, have started to proliferate for engaging customers, for them to uh, be, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, for, for the customers to get a better understanding of your product or the customers to get a better sense for your product. I think the realism of these tools and the ability to handle the customer journey from CRM all the way to a purchase and give them options of uh, uh, digital insurance and loan-based tools and do this on one seamless platform is what is going to change the game. Today, I, I, I'm, I'm like, was, but like was presented in the previous platform, I'm sorry, the previous presentation, there are multiple platforms that one uses. If, the, if, if uh, there is a different CRM platform, there's a different uh, platform to uh, you know, help customer uh, get a walkthrough or a visualization. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think what, what is going to change significantly is uh, 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 you know, a unified platform that is going to help the customer have a very seamless journey uh, and give the customer comfort in the product and the, uh, the offering that is being uh, bought online. The other thing that is changing is uh, uh, you know, marketplaces that had a significant offline uh, presence through brokers, I think the world of brokerage is going to change forever in the in, in the in the foreseeable future and significantly in the next two to three years. So, I think there was a significant dependence of all platforms, whether it was 99 Acres or Magic Bricks. All these platforms were significantly dependent on brokers who were on the field, and a lot of their business came from, you know, subscriptions. And uh, classifies and selling classifieds to these brokers. I think that world is going to change. I think a lot of these platforms are going to be now direct to customer. Uh, there, there is going to be a significant uh, disruption of the broker market, and I think a lot of the brokers have to get prepared for that. I don't know if somebody else is covering uh, the 
how the world of the brokers is going to change. But I think, uh, you know, uh, a lighter, uh, like uh, uh, disintermediation that is happening, a lot of direct to customer uh, product selling is happening. I think uh, um, all real estate uh, products and assets, uh, which uh, have been slow, whether it is a, a rental product uh, or whether it's a actual um, commercial real estate product or a, or a urban uh, a residential product. I think a lot of these uh, purchases will move online and um, uh, literacy uh, is going to catch up. There is going to, it's, so I think uh, the, the constraint in my mind is not going to be digital literacy. The constraint is the ability of um, either marketplaces or the end real estate companies uh, to provide a seamless digital experience. I think the experience is still broken. I think the experience is good in pockets. They do a little bit of a good job with their SEO. They do a little bit of a good job with uh, their CRM. But as, as at, a, at a holistic level, they're not able to give the customer a seamless journey and give the customer the confidence that they can actually transact totally online without any visit. Thank you. Thank you, Prashant, sir. That was, uh, that was fabulous, fantastic. And uh, absolutely the different insight. Uh, though as a, as a broker, I will come back to you separately on, on some of the things. But yeah, I think that battle will continue. And uh, see, what, what I wanted to see sometimes, you know, we think our world is not changing, right? And unfortunately, the world is changing and we have to make ourselves relevant in this new world. Right. Uh, and it's I'm not saying that there is no role for a broker, but the role for the broker is is contextually going to change. And and hence, they have to reposition themselves in, in this world. And definitely there is a value add and there is a role for them. But the context and why platforms would engage with them and why customers would, would engage with them will change. Uh, Prashant sir, let me add up to it very lightly. Besides being a broker, I'm also married for the last 30 years and I completely believe change is constant and some of them come in a flurry. So absolutely prepared with it. Uh, thank you so much, sir. For that was a fantastic session. Uh, we'll move on to our last panelist, uh, Mr. Uh, John Kuruvela. You know, he happens to be one of my favorite people in, in, in real estate. Because with his name, he advertises a villa. Every single time he spells out his name, there is a villa in there. And that's pretty significant for real estate. Uh, Mr. Kuruvala is the chief mentor, Brigade REAP, and brings over three decades of expertise from diverse fields such as marketing, sales, brand building, customer relations, revenue management, pricing, p &L responsibility, entrepreneurship, mentorship, and investing. He has invest, been extremely instrumental in origin of several successful brands in India, has, has also built award-winning advertising campaigns like Hamara Bajaj, Toyota Collis, Maruti Omni, etc. He has worked in companies like Reliance Industries, Reliance Geo, Oberoi Hotels, Air Deccan, JWT, Leo Burnett, Leo Burnett sorry, and has done three startups. Being a serial entrepreneur and with his diverse expertise in domains, John has mentored close to 50 young minds with one unicorn and numerous others on the path to global success. I think that's fantastic. Mr. Kuruvala, we have heard Mr. Shinivasan, Mr. Kishore, Mr. Bindal talk about the future of real estate. Mr. Jain and Mr. Prakash have talked about digitization along with Karan. Uh, as being the next steps for the industry. But before I go there, I would like to recite a very small story of positivity and perspective, which is what you add uh, to, the, to the industry. You know, there was a shoe company that sent two salespeople for research to Africa for sales of their shoes potential in Africa. The first guy sent a fax the next day saying there is absolutely no shoe sale potential here 
there is no one here who wears shoes. The second guy sent a fax saying, 100% potential, no one here wears shoes. So life is purely about that perspective and we've got to take the positive angle to it. So John, sir, you've been a king in advertisement. So I keep saying hell is unpopular because it is badly advertised. Nobody has really seen it. So who better than you to tell our audience the power of ad advertisement, especially in a Digitech world. So please tell us, how do we power up the reality industry with digitalization and technology enablement? John, sir. Thank you, Samir. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you, Vinka Mandra, Ashok Kumar, and the team at Kage for giving us the opportunity to share our learnings and expertise um, in how the real estate industry can leverage technology uh, for future growth. Uh, Brigade REAP, the acronym REAP stands for Real Estate Accelerator Program. It also is a tongue-in-cheek implication of as you sow, so shall you reap. Uh, was set up in 2016, long before the word PropTech came into essence. In fact, Samir, when we set this up in 2016, uh, when I was with Jay Shankar and uh, who's the chairman of Brigade and with Nirupa, who's the executive director, a lot of people told them, you know, you're wasting time. You will not find more than 10 startups who are in the real estate space, who are addressing solutions for real estate. And they were not wrong. In the first cohort in 2016, we got 100 startup applications. Only 15 were relevant to the space. We persisted. And, and we persisted, and today, uh, after three years, we have evaluated 1,600 plus prop tech startups and mentored 33 startups who cumulatively today are worth over $75 million and are being used by every large and small real estate companies that they have come in contact with. But why did we, why did we look at real estate? Uh, for years, the real estate sector, sector has been the second largest employment generator in India and will hit a market size. I mean, I was amazed of $1 trillion by 2031. And to make things more exciting, 600 million people are going to move into urban India up from 434. It contributes 13% of the GDP and is the second largest employment generator in the country. And you know, these numbers are similar across large developed markets too. And the industry, the interesting thing is, this is a very resilient industry and I salute people who've stuck in there uh, uh, and, 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 and sustained and, and survived uh, tsunamis in the past three years, like demonetization, GST, RERA, and now COVID. But these are extreme external forces the industry is grappling with, but a bigger danger that the industry has is more internal. Globally, the real estate industry is amongst the most inefficient industry across the world. And there are McKinsey studies which justify this. While it is the second largest employment generator, it is amongst the lowest productivity by employee across categories. And the reason for that also is the fact that less than 1% of revenue generated by real estate is plowed back into R&D and technology. In fact, the industry average is 3.3% and the media and banking industries invest in excess of 6%. All, both these combined together also ensure that almost 80% of projects in India are over budget and delayed. I'm gonna show you a digital heat map, which shows you very, very clearly that real estate and construction are amongst the least digitized sectors in our country. And, and this again is a challenge. Now in 2000, I was the first company in India to actually start the digitization process where we took the consumer digital. I launched a company called PropMart. It still exists, but subsequently, 
Many consumer facing companies came up Magic Breaks, Housing.com, Makan, Common Flow, Nightman Acres. But all these companies were doing just one thing they were changing the mode of interaction between the consumer and the supply, which is the real estate. The real technology challenges actually lay below the top of the iceberg. Smart communities, sustainable buildings, home automation, supply chain, alternate energy, 3D modeling, security, virtual reality, nanotechnology, big data. And we started exploring these areas way back in 2016. But before I actually take you through uh, the, the innovation that is coming into, into the tech space, into real estate, I want to share with you some of the larger problems that are facing each one of them, each one of us, and the real estate industry at large. Global water scarcity. I mean, the audience here will be shocked to know that by 2025, 21 cities in India will run out of groundwater. Lakes. We, we've seen red stories of lakes in India catching fire. That's because 77% of Indian sewage is untreated and goes into lakes. And we also have a dearth of power. Now, you have the real estate industry, which is not digitized, which is now adopting digitization. But more important is that while this fourth tsunami, which is COVID, will go by in a couple of years, the fifth tsunami that they need to watch out and come to terms with is the environment. You can't mess with nature. Garbage. Do you know that in the next five years, you will need landfill the size of Bangalore to take care of our untreated garbage. And every 10 years, you will need a Bangalore to take care of landfills for every major urban city. The air in Delhi is unbreathable. We in Bangalore are lucky. But even then, in the next 10, 15 years, and I'll show you why this is going to happen, the very air we breathe will become unbreathable. One of the things that is a silent killer which nobody has recognized, is that 4G has brought in a higher density of cell towers. 5G is going to quadruple that. And that is going to create electromagnetic radiations, which are going to impact the health of each one of us. The cities we live in will become unlivable. This is a heat map of Bangalore. From 2002 to 2020, 18 years, the green cover of Bangalore has moved down from 38% to less than 2.6%. Now, am I spelling gloom and doom? No, I'm just outlining the roadmap that each one of us needs to take to make sure that we grapple with these issues before they go out of hand. And this will have an impact on real estate. Bangalore itself will have a cumulative loss of 22 to 23,000 crores just on the fact that energy consumption will go up by 64% over the next 15 years. Water consumption will go up by 32% over the next years. And so will waste. And we now need to ensure that we bring in technology to handle all this. The 33 REAP startups that have been mentored handle almost every aspect that I talked of and more. Smarter Dharma on top is actually helping real estate developers build sustainable buildings that do not generate carbon dioxide, that are eco-friendly, that conserve, that consume less energy, less water. Natura is helping bring back gardens to rooftops by using a new media substrate called Coco Peat. EcoSTP is an unusual company. It has taken the digestive system of the cow's stomach and created an STP that does not need power, that does not need manual scavenging, and does not need to be opened for two years. Those who live in apartments know that you know where an STP is located because of the smell. And the beauty of Eco STP is that you can claim the land on top of the STP. The United Nations, incidentally, has recognized Eco STP as the best practice for STP that the world should adopt. Current talk to Pothol Raja, company who came to us, who's now ensuring that with public part, uh, uh, private participation, potholes are, are filled up. Snaptrude, a company that's invested in by Excel, is actually going to change the way 
the world consumes AutoCAD. It's going to replace AutoCAD because of the kind of flexibility it's bringing in. Srini alluded to how virtual reality is going to be a way of life. PropVR has actually, during COVID times, increased its business 14x because it is allowing customers and real estate companies on the fly to consume consuming walkthroughs as if they are there. We got till date has saved 2 billion liters of water per month now. LiveSafe is actually cocooning people in their homes. Work for home is great, but work for home has problems because if you see a cell tower out of your window, rest assured that the EMR radiation in your house is, is causing you fatigue and headaches. Blue Sync is automating it. Apka Painter, just been invested by Pedalite, is actually bringing painters to your home at one third, the, at, uh, saving you one third the amount that is normally happening. Last Yard is doing an excellent job of actually minimizing the number of people coming into your complexes by creating a last mile delivery system where they ensure that Flipkart, Swiggy people do not bring in contamination and they're stopped at the gate and the runners of, of Express manage that. Renovate has just raised money from Better Capital. They are helping the renovation industry. Prop CMC is bringing in data into creating transparency. And QuickSpec is actually saving real estate companies by digitizing the last mile in the real estate fraternity. 95% of the real estate workforce sit at the site. And this company, and nobody touched about it, uses the mobile phone in the hands of laborers to actually monitor, manage, and save you costs. Now, the companies that I've highlighted are actually those who are also saving the environment. Like this, we have startups in the commercial space. You have uh, network convergence, Microtel. Instead of bringing in 20 different lines into a building, Microtel actually networks all external communication lines, whether it's Airtel, Tata Sky, Geo, uh, Act, um, uh, Hathaway, all of these are actually connected to one box, minimizing the number of ducts, minimizing the number of, of wires that need to be pulled in. Uh, Synchronext is actually helping companies optimize power spending. P Parky is helping you manage parking. CRE Metrics is helping real estate developers actually use data to decide where they should build their next mall or their next office complex. So this is the kind of startups that we have identified, and these have come out of 1,650 plus startups. 30 of them are now being put into the market, and the good news is that the COVID period has been a blessing for these startups because almost every week we are doing a webinar like this, explaining to, start, to real estate companies in Mysore, in Sapara, in Nagpur, in Calcutta, in Delhi, about how they can use technology to actually save time, increase their, their sales velocity, and reduce costs. The good news also is that media is helping these startups because prop tech, like I said, is now come of vogue. Last year, there were several prop tech awards in India. Business Today covered 12 of the coolest startups in India, and that was sector agnostic. Three of the startups were prop tech startups. NASCOM, CBRA, Disruptec, the first, second, and third startups were again REAP startups. KPMG's global newsletter covered two of our startups adding value. JLL's PropTech winner was again VGOT. Forbes under 30, you had Clayco. So the point we're making is, and I think uh, 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 Prashant, you alluded to the fact that the, 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 the real estate brokers have to change the way they work. And let me tell you of an industry that I helped completely change. When Airdecken was started in 2003, 98% of all business came through travel agents. When I stood up at a conference in 2005 and I said, gentlemen, ladies, it's time for you to completely reimagine the way you work, I was boo-booed out. But by 2006, 80% of all transactions in the travel space was digital. And the good news was that of the 80%, 50% were travel agents who actually morphed digitally. And I believe that with companies like No Broker coming in, with companies 
in the digital space coming in, our real estate fraternity and the broker community are digitizing. And I know several brokers in India who are talking to us or using many of our startups to actually propel themselves to the next wave. So ladies and gentlemen on the call, stay safe, live secure, and, and the prop tech startups are here to help both the environment and the real estate industry flourish COVID or no COVID. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kurvila. That was, that was uh, deep. That was fabulous. And it throws an amazing, amazing perspective. More respect for you and, uh, and Brigade Group, Jay Shankar Saab, Nirupa, and all of them for, for providing opportunities to so many prop tech companies. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's take a little deeper. We are not way off time. So we will have a little time for a small panel discussion, uh, which is often questions from your presentations. And then we'll take the audience questions as they come along the way. So my first question based on uh, what all of you uh, Illuminati of Bangalore have presented to us in terms of digitization is, how does one assess a budget for an online digital marketing campaign? Say for a uh, apartment or a luxury project and what medium works especially in luxury projects because the old adage was luxury projects would be sold through personal connects and not over digital platform it's only the average project that would be sold in there so it's a very interesting question because a lot of lot of uh, brokers the real estate community to the realtors would also want to assess and budget based on their cash flows as to how much to invest in what kind of a product on digitization. So probably each one of you could comment on it. John, since you finished, we'll start with you itself. Uh, thanks, uh, Samir. So let me give you an example of a startup called Totality. Okay. I was completely shocked that Totality between February and June has digitally through digital marketing closed 3,600 EOIs from, from consumers in just for just six projects in Mumbai. So there is a, you know, totality helps real estate builders reduce their cost of customer acquisition by hold your breath by two thirds. So the beauty of digital is that unlike an arrow which is shot out of a quiver of a bow when you do press, you can, you can quickly tweak and refine your digital strategies and conserve cash and use data to fine tune your strategies. Let me confidently tell you that the ROIs from digital are far more measurable and are far better than any that you can use across any other forms of communication. So my advice to, this, to, to the real estate fraternity is experiment. Put aside not large sums of money, put aside 50,000 rupees. The beauty is that in, in press, you can't get anything for 50,000 rupees. In television, forget it. Radio, just about. Digital is focused, digital is analyzable, and digital can be measured. That's my advice. So don't worry about budget. Take a small sum and experiment. Fantastic. Fantastic. Prashant, sir, would you want to add on to uh, the same question? Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, John, uh, what John said is perfect. Uh, the only thing I would add on is there are two parts when you're talking about an expensive product. Uh, there will be a branding part of the marketing where you need to position your uh, product and, uh, you know, create good content. So one of the things that I've seen, uh, you know, digital marketing is, uh, uh, is is great, but I think the upfront effort that needs to be put in to provide good content to whoever is doing it, whether they're doing it on Instagram or whether they're doing it on YouTube, I think not enough effort is put into creating quality content. So invest in the content first. And even there, like John said, uh, you don't have to develop all the content day one. 
you can iterate on that content see which content is working and uh, you know uh, double down on stuff that is working more the content that's working more so uh, that's the only thing i'll add on con- the other maybe the only other thing i will add is uh, i don't think google uh, is the end all of today where uh, you know performance marketing or uh, you know your customers can be uh, uh, engaged i think there are many platforms which are especially since you're talking about specifically uh, more uh, uh, higher end property and um, a more involved sale i don't think uh, you know google is necessarily the only or the best place to do it so uh, spend some time uh, so three things better content better research on what platforms will work for you and like john said better ways of measuring your metrics and seeing what's working i think you'll have to tie in all these three together thank you so much thank you so much that was fantastic i keep experimenting a lot with the content as people connected to me on social media would know and i keep saying content is the king all right but conversion is the queen and we are all after the queen eventually to decide our content so great uh, my next question more for uh, uh, karan and shrini sir if both of you could answer it one by one how do we effectively engage the buyers in the digital space and especially the role of uh, artificial intelligence into the into the dg world of real estate shrini sir maybe we can start with you and then come to karan you are on mute sir unmute yourself Oh, sorry. Uh, basically, since I come from TVWA, where uh, we always believe that disruption works uh, as to whatever you want to communicate, the meaning that uh, identify conventions that rule the market and then you know, come up with a vision. And uh, then your communication needs to be uh, so provocative that, you know, at the same time, speak the truth. You know? Commun- communi- John will definitely... Uh, agree that uh, communication is one thing that you need to tell stories you know it's it's not about just uh, put a happy family and a picnic basket and tell that you know uh, this is what it is instead you need to speak the truth which uh, unfortunately in the fraternity most of them are not doing it at snms for example even if you are delayed a, a project uh, we tell uh, customers in advance personally a letter from me and nitin will go out to all of them apologizing customers appreciate that but uh, 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 availability of the top level management is one thing which needs to be do all these digital print media radio everything is fine but uh, but the end of the day i think so through digital thing we can definitely get in touch with customers just say a hello to them it's not necessarily that an advertisement should go out only for clement or grandeur or uh, eternia it's all about personal touch in terms of how we do it and supported by a digital communication which is definitely speaking the truth if you are delayed by a year you tell them in advance that we are delayed by a year don't promise them under promise over delivery that was that's what works really well as far as snm is concerned super karan would you want to add to the question specifically oh i totally in sync with chini vasan sir and i think pi that is personal interaction and ai artificial intelligence work coexist together in the real estate uh, having said that uh, just highlight in people say normally high ticket size is a, for example in a bangalore scenario is 2 crore or 3 crore plus but i always like to focus at every consumer segment it is already an aspirational plan for every sector a customer who is buying 50 lakh it is a premium for him a customer who is buying 1 crore is a premium for him because he is taking about 15 to 20 years of over leverage loan so please understand it is always an expensive buy and the most expensive asset he is ever investing on and going by the residential trend of real estate uh, we are already seeing it's not surmounting to the growth level which was existing about 10 years back so keeping that in mind i'll give you one simple example two days back i met a software technology which can do a ai integration with the whatsapp chatting i think uh, prashant sir and ajon may be much more advanced in this domain but for me it was new and how many builders are actually aware of technology because most of us still focus on location most of us are busy with handling government issues that's the biggest challenge in this sector 
and unforeseen problems which you do not even understand uh talking of snn itself i remember when btm raj which was a turn around when sn to snn it became i remember sanjay and uh, ramesh sir and kushri ramesh is my uncle also so they had a huge time in solving that problem for four years and so on so the whole point is ai will work but the product the service is what you need to sell in this industry and integrate with this and don't say bangalore is a case study bangalore has a tech ba based background which people understand software people are used to technology buyers are conducive to that thought process uh, when prashant sir gave a digital penetration idea look at whole soul as india so you don't use bangalore as a case study but yes ai will start interposing very fast in this look at facebook ads you will understand look at google ads what you browse through every damn ad starts popping around you in that left right center yeah over to you thank you ai is like the wife it just snoops around absolutely uh kishore sir my next question is to you digitalization uh tech platforms uh the change of industry and like prashant sir said i think the world is about to change uh for the for the brokers in specific obviously a lot for the developers to along with in the times to come but one of the things where we lag behind and karan touched upon it is the is the government initiative so do you think uh credai and the other associations whether it's naretco whether it's uh, the realtor associations like nar kriya will we be able to influence the government to come up on the same page on the technology upgrade otherwise we will remain slow and there is a process that will keep killing the killing the speed of it so what do you think we can do to to change that quickly kishor sir first of all i'll congratulate all the elite panelists for their wonderful presentation it took lot of insight for me lot of new learnings ki how the technology has been changed you know and we were not able to catch up with that but all the technology or majority of the technology what has been mentioned huh, it takes care of the demand side challenges of the real estate sector however the supply side challenge still remains for the real estate sector the construction technology i would say is still a, at a very primitive stage in our country but much has been changed still we use age old and if i could see the last 100 years history of uh, construction technology very minimal changes has happened or many minimal technology has been adapted in construction although in last decade it's catching up and things are getting improved uh, one along with the construction technology the one of the biggest hurdle for any project to be on the track and to move as per the business plan schedule sir is the important stakeholder is the government agencies the kind of policy reform we could see uh, particularly the government department uh, majority of them will not be in tandem with the other agencies sir one agencies will work for example if i have to get a completion certificate for a building project here comes the pollution control board and says if you have installed stp it should be having that consent for operation for that there should be 30% of the load capacity and to have 30% of the load capacity you need to have people residing there and people can't reside until unless we don't get oc so it's a classical case of like chicken pox or egg pox something like that so it took lot of time to reason with them and finally very reluctantly they will relent and this kind of challenges will be facing which defies logic and they very openly says like all the, even i am talking about those ias officers also we understand your point we get your logic but logic and legal both are different things and uh, kadai as a organization has put lot of effort and uh, in last 5 years a uh, lot of government processes uh, has been digitized but however as i said we have digitized but still there is a reluctance from those uh, officers uh, to implement 100% there will be always still there are like human interventions are there and every software or every mobile app which has been developed by government in last two decade still there is one or other kind of human intervention is there why the human intervention that answer is very obvious why they want still to have control 
I think until and unless the government comes up something uh, which can be implemented 100% uh, without any human intervention and the change in the mindset of the officers uh, not to regul not to control you regulate but don't control be it in a very automated transparent online process much has been done from the government part uh, but still more is required to be done and more than any new processes uh, i would say the implementation is the key if that happens uh, then this one of the biggest supply side challenges can be addressed yeah over to you thank you so much sir thank you so much humbled by that uh, response and i think that's the requirement of the day one last question before we take questions from everybody and this is for all the panelists uh, all of you so any one of you can take this and respond with your thoughts uh, co living co working are affected with affected by the covid office space consumption will reduce having said that some of the biggest deals that have been finalized on office space have been in the last one one and a half month residential market will look up temporarily will look down later you know there are a lot of these thoughts and ideas and uh, facts from people moving around into the market with the uncertainties of covid keeping all of that in mind especially the digital way because that's the one way left for all especially to the real estate fraternity the realtors the people who sell it your two suggestions to them to implement in the next 3 to 6 months to change their business two suggestions digitally that you would want every realtor to implement each one of you very quickly kishor sir we'll start back with you yeah 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 i think uh, first and foremost uh, for selling your product uh, digital is the only option i would say and which has been visible and evident during the covid period and uh, i concur with all the panelists we who said that the kind of uh, sales happened during those covid lockdown period one may be because of the requirement particular mumbai and ncr during lockdown uh, people have a lot of time so all those husband and wife together also have lot of time and they were able to discuss on the design changes and they were able to discuss on the plan layout and able to take decision faster and that has really helped uh, in boosting sales uh, across these two metros and uh, i think digital is inevitable and very cost effective very focused uh, and uh, i could make a statement you don't have option either you have to be digital or you have to perish this will be my suggestion to all the real estate stakeholders thank you so much sir prashant sir sir whatever i had to say i think kishor sir has said <laughs> uh, but uh, but you know that said i think uh, the platforms are also changing dramatically right uh, which so so we you you'll have to really leverage the platforms that there are there and unfortunately service providers uh, are not the best in the country to support and help uh, a lot of these digital uh, transformations that uh, you know i i don't know if again there is a chicken and egg issue right because the service providers say we are, we don't get paid well in india and that's why we don't uh, have uh, uh, you know great customers here and uh, because you don't have great customers great service providers don't come up so so the only challenge i see is everybody has to figure it out for themselves you know in other countries there are good service providers who will help you adopt some of these changes and these transformations very quickly so uh, my only suggestion or request is that good service providers require to be compensated well uh, and you know don't think of it like you would think of uh, you know uh, Uh, a plumber or a uh, you know even even a good plumber also requires to be paid well but i'm just saying a good digital specialist uh, is is not a cheap asset and uh, you know you you have to uh, you know pay for the tools and also for the service provider who will help you in the adoption of the tools and it's to your benefit to put that investment up front so that you you actually can accelerate your journey towards digitalization super shri sir uh, 
what i would i would uh, both uh, kishore ji as well as prashant ji said the same thing i would add uh, one more point to that that uh, channel partners will play a major role as far as uh, liquidation of uh, you know inventory that's there available ready to move on because i think with pandemic hitting everybody i think people would prefer to uh, go in for ready to move in maybe you all have to play a major role rather than asking us to increase the uh, commission and uh, when the payment will come i think we need to work together see majority of the channel partner meets whenever me and nitin attend uh, when we open it up for question and answer they will first question which will come is how much is the have you increased the commission uh, i think uh, i'm not saying that money is uh, you know not required uh, i am a firm believer that uh, you know in bible john will definitely vouch for this in bible it is said that money is the root cause of all evil Uh, i would just put one more word to that the love of money is the root cause of all evil actually it's not money money is definitely required all of us have to work together this is the period credit should come channel partner should come any creative i am creating i should willingly give it to samir and say please you do also your own thing in magic breaks 99 acres because all these guys are known to us no right from rohit to dinesh and Mag- magic breaks they are all willing to work with us nicely so we need to kind of package that and plan as fantastic presentation by john kurvilla basically no plan as well as your new launches or things and maybe call in john all the builders because since even now technology is not fully utilized by the technical department because basically they have the age old system of working with the uh, consultants in terms of pmc whatever you guys do it i think we need to move away from that and then invite man like john to come and present to the technical team educate them well because their mindset is kind of a blinkers it is we need to do that how we want to go about it actually this pandemic is a great lesson for all of us how we want to project ourselves from the, at least the second quarter of 2021 uh, karan actually correctly said mid up till mid up next year i think this will continue to take its heavy toll and then we need to come up with this is the period to uh, sit back and think about how we can progress it is everything is brilliant actually now even now uh, there is a huge demand as far as housing is concerned people said property prices will come down i am increasing the price so we need to make that happen through the bodies through the channel partners through all our uh, vendors who are i normally don't call them vendors the partners of whoever service providers the prashant said correctly we all have to work together thank you so much sir thank you john uh, and then next karan very quickly because we need to take audience questions so sameer uh, you know this is a great time for introspection you know i'll i'll just digress for 30 seconds i have a friend of mine who owns 90 hotels across india and he's basically screwed okay so he called me and said what do i do i said you have to revisit every line item in your books which were assets which have now become liabilities so his rooms were assets now liabilities his banquets were assets became liabilities his kitchens were assets became liabilities and i wrote a blog called destructive disruption and i said approve change everything you know make your kitchens cloud kitchen stock to zomato and swiggy use a delivery system to actually cater to food across india and this was in march i said your housekeeping state them to neighborhoods and get them to start doing housekeeping for individuals your laundry service cater to hospitals cater to and you know a lot of people said you know you're talking through your hat and in april marriott actually put out ads which said home delivery over i put out ads which said home delivery marriott sends people to your homes to clean marriott takes laundry so the real estate industry and one of the things i told him to shock him i said stop being a don start being a cockroach you have to learn how to survive otherwise you'll be a dinosaur and the first thing i'd advise my friends here is keep egos aside revisit everything that made you successful look at the challenges that are constraining you and let me tell you there are enough bright young startups who are willing to work with you to help you succeed training in addition to what prashant shini karan uh, kishore ji said 
you know, training is critical. Use this period to train your teams. Measurement, please. I come from a school where what cannot be measured is a waste of time and money. Digital will help you measure and retweak your strategy on the fly. Digital will give you insights like no other medium. And the third thing is collaborate. Why can't three builders collaborate with each other? Uh, and there are so many ways to do this. And I'm happy to bring the startups that have we've mentored two forums. We've done eight Kridai forums, and Kishoji was kind enough to allow us to do one. And a lot of those builders are reaching out to our startups. So we are here to serve the fraternity of the real estate community, the brokers, the developers. Feel free to reach out to us. Thank you for this opportunity, Samir. Okay. Superb. Uh, Karan, yeah. a quick thing. Uh, builders, by the acronym itself, is the people who build nations. But India, we have made them developers. Yeah, that's one part. Second part, uh, thanks to organizations like Kradai and Kriya, what you're trying to do is you're trying to bring a change in the industry by bringing a value to ethics to the industry. And adoption, adoption, adoption. It's a very simple world. I don't blame anything to COVID. Because even if COVID has actually taught us to be in the realistic frame of mind, industry is already oversupplied with number of more developers than actually needed. Number of more, Samir, if I may ask you, how many relators are in the industry in Bangalore itself? Uh, close to about uh, 60,000 organized realtors. Maybe. That's organized, right? Yeah. And plus unorganized. Yes. Does industry really need this much? Hmm. So these are the realistic questions which one needs to address. Uh, in the co-working space and co-living, what you mentioned, I was talking to Suresh Rajan Co-Live and Nesta Vemrinder Sahu and all those, because I have also investment in a couple of companies. And it is going to get under consolidation, whatever may happen. It was bound to happen because many of them were sitting on a valuation metrics. Many of you are not looking at unit economics profit. And the point is every industry has to get consolidated sooner or later, whether it's developers, uh, whether it is relators, whether it is technology companies, everything has to put consolidation. And AI, ML, if you're talking, I have a big fear apart from environment because I work very closely with Ricky Cage, who is the UNESCO brand ambassador in the country and United Nations brand ambassador. Uh, what John told, uh, I totally resonance. We are not even thinking about it. We're only talking about it. And if that happens, imagine real estate crash in the India and the whole banking system will crash. And overall, the whole economy will crash and nobody's even thinking about it. So pretty apathetic approach on the overall front. But yes, consolidation is bound to come. Be ready for it. Thank you. Superb. My personal uh, clappings. I think it's been an absolutely brilliant panel of speakers. And I'm sure there are enough and more in the audience saying that. Since we have shortage of time, uh, thank you to all of speakers. We will move quickly to the Q&A from the audience. We'll keep it very short and pick up just two, three questions. But let me say this for all realtors. Not everything is bleak. Uh, you know, there are, there are many positive things uh, uh, COVID has also brought in. Uh, and I would like to spread that positive message, even if it's a, like a little joke. But uh, not all couples have fallen in love staying together, locked in for two months. Some of them couldn't bear each other. They wanted to separate. So I have a case where a couple has sold a villa through me. And both of them have bought two separate apartments. So it's like three transactions from the same couple from me. And more such new innovations will come up in the market. More on the lighter front for everybody. Let's just uh, quickly move to the questions. So there is a question from Aman Sharma, which says, I'm totally aligned on the fact that digital presence is way to go. My concern, given the current economic scenario, how can we guide a consumer to have the same pocket share? Secondly, do you think that the skeptical outlook of consumers, especially the late adopters of digital media, would change any soon? Anybody could take it? Karan? I could not understand the relevance of question. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I, since I couldn't understand, I have put it across to you. But what they are saying, while I'm aligned to digital uh, scenario, but the current economic scenario says consumer does not have the pocket share, which I would presume is the interest and the skeptical outlook to real estate. So would that change that soon? So money never gets evaporated. It just exchanges hands. What a fab reply. It's very simple. Uh, consumer expecting too much, especially from the residential developers. The cost of construction is going up. Cost of delay is going up. Industry was already bleeding at less than 15% uh, gross margins. And if you're expecting 
to get a discount more than that i think you are really insane especially if you're buying an under construction project from unknown developer your money will evaporate but it will never go out it will go to somebody else and remember that and finally and most importantly uh, yes there will be a hit in commercial in mid to long run uh, especially in multiple office spaces which is actually increasing the demand of residential spaces and as shini sir said additional 100 to 120 feet rooms are also being uh, thought of i have made in one of my new projects coming a co-working space in itself where 20 people can actually work inside the premises in 116 flats so you have to think differently demand is going to happen because this time of buying people are at, uh, i am actually having every day a visit but that does not mean every developer will have again how you build your market in companies super fantastic reply karan uh, prashant sir i'll take the next question to you it's from sahana kulkarni and uh, what they asking is with the increasing spends on digital marketing uh, will data analytics and content if not more hold equal importance or will, will it be a trial error in a error phase and i specifically bring it to you because i know you'll talk about the right no i'll let I, i'll let john answer it first and then i'll take it great john sir aisa kyun kar rahe ho chick content will play a significant role you have to understand that you're looking at consumer eyeballs and then his wallet and every real estate developer is going to go out, all out to showcase his or her offerings in the best possible way so while content will become king i think the overriding uh, factor will also be the trust and the credibility of the builder that they spend years creating and i'll give you the case of a builder out of bombay called veena developers during covid time they booked 1800 uis one builder it's a builder i haven't heard of uh, but you know it's 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 a mid level builder who's doing extremely well so content will become king but layer content with a lot of targeted communications you can't like 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 prashant said you can't just use google there are today so many ways of slicing and dicing social media uh, there are blogs uh, uh, a way of getting i mean i i've just learned from the startups and how they building such fabulous brands on using free you don't have to be just about spending try free everybody is giving you free credits and then move um, to to pay it so the beauty of digital marketing is it allows you experimentation and fine tuning and being very very focused prashant prashant sir okay uh, prashant ji i presume is tied up at the back end on a call no 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 i, I was just okay. uh, mute <clears throat> so so see i i think um, uh you know john has largely covered uh, you know mo- most of it uh, but i i i believe that uh, you know what what was the question sorry great <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know the question was uh, you know will data analytics and content not play equivalent part to digital marketing uh, or will it be a trial and error phase no i think see data analytics and uh, you know is the bedrock or data science is the bedrock of any uh, uh type of marketing or any kind of customer engagement that you will do and i think uh, uh, previously also we spoke about how ai is playing a role in all forms of engagement and conversation with your customer so th- there's not a big difference between uh customer engagement and customer conversation and um you know uh, how how you look at data analytics so it's it's really uh, you know the technical uh, uh part of what you need to uh, gather insights and derive insights from customer engagement and customer conversation is only possible through data science and only if you have that data science or data analytics can you be smart about then what you know, what how how you derive value from those insights right so th- there is a big correlation between all of these superb uh we absolutely love to uh, you know close our webinars dot on time and we are touching the 2 hour mark so we'll take that one last question uh which i found very unique 
this is uh, chandrabahan patel who was asking developers in bangalore do they have any plans to provide special quarantine rooms in flats or in a layout scheme now i think that's a very unique one that i've heard and maybe maybe i'll ask uh, shrini sir and uh, kishore sir to answer this please shrini sir please unmute yourself sir shrini sir you need to unmute uh, very good question actually coincidentally yesterday i got a mail from one of my project in harlur road Uh, the secretary of the association was uh, asking me because i received a video uh, where couple of projects i think in mumbai had developed this kind of a covid room only for the uh, uh, society in case if somebody is to be quarantined they can go there and stay rather than staying at home so i discussed this with nitin and deep and we are meeting all the association uh, secretaries of snn properties to see whether we can definitely provide one but uh, having said that you will have to also understand the moment in case of somebody is quarantined then there is a huge panic button is pressed and when people started uh, questioning why they should stay there no we can't uh, we will get it so we need to thoroughly think over this but it's a very good idea which we don't mind exploring but we'll have to take it uh, on case by case cases you can't adopt one room for everybody establish something and tomorrow uh, receive some kind of a backlash from the owner so we need to we need to do that it will be a good initiative somebody is doing super kishore sir would you want to add uh, the developers were not prepared for this uh, pandemic or any kind of disaster nobody had thought in fact while designing the project uh, the mindset of developer was to how to make it more compact and how to make it more affordable that was the pre covid era but during covid there were developed there was a developer from chennai who has already designed and announced a launch of a project with a quarantine facility it people the project which are at the drawing board level so one of the input to them was to the architects and designer was provide more open spaces in an apartment complex or so where any kind of disaster or any kind of uncertainty can be uh, mitigated so going forward answer is yes but earlier no it wasn't taken care thank you so much uh, to all our panelists and all our patient audience it's been a fabulous fabulous session I know I've read a lot of comments saying this is one of the best webinars uh, that our audience. Uh, a lot of people have said that they have attended, but I must admit, as a moderator, this has been one of the best that I have attended, and it's absolutely fabulous to be amongst, amongst the wisdom of such highly acclaimed people. So thank you so much, Mr. Shrinivasan Subramaniam, Mr. Karan Bindal, Mr. Prashant Prakash, Mr. Kishore Jain, and Mr. John Karavala. for taking time out from your busy schedules and giving us an insight on how the atmosphere for the real estate will be and what kind of work culture we need to develop with digitization post this pandemic so sab sabir uh, sir if i if i may mention on just one thing sure, you know this is the power of bangalore and i don't think something like this could have been put together in any other city and this again proves beyond a point that the future of real estate is not in ncr is not in mumbai it's in the city namma bengaluru absolutely absolutely thank you absolutely very well said i would like to add as a panelist in fact last three months i would have attended multiple webinar this could be one of the best insightful uh, webinar i have attended kudos to all my co panelist congratulations to all of them thank you very much wonderful in fact sir i will i will further add up to it i i was about to write a book uh, which i'll cancel now after this webinar but i was writing a book called death by webinar you know so is <laughs> joking <laughs> but uh, you have enlightened many minds today i'm sure and helped them with a uh, with their insecurities it was fabulous to have you on our webinar i'll request the kage team to please put up their contact information so that if audience has any further questions or some of them are missed they can be answered have a great day stay safe tell homes thank, thank you. you thank you everybody pleasure